The main goal of this production is to provide information to people, much of which is quite well hidden. It is our sincere hope that everyone who views this material will be inspired to question things and to search out the truth for themselves. The arguments and conclusions contained within this work are the accumulated result of over 25 years of investigation and personal research. Many of the arguments presented here are not new, however, in order to see the larger picture, it is necessary that the many smaller pieces of the puzzle first be put into order. The information contained herein is as important to mankind as it is urgent. However, in an almost unfathomable act of irresponsibility, it is for the most part being ignored by governments, academics and media all over the world. This film is designed to make it clear to the viewer that there is more to the workings of this world than how it appears on the surface, and that this fact can readily be proven. It is the opinion of the makers of this film that the people of the world very much need to understand the true nature of the problems faced by the human family in order to find real and meaningful solutions to them, and that these problems do seriously need to be addressed in order to secure a peaceful and prosperous future. We do not ask or expect anyone to believe what is presented within the chapters of this film without first investigating all the evidence for themselves, and we very much urge you to do so. Remember, the truth is always out there somewhere, and sometimes right in front of our eyes, if we would only choose to notice. Over the last several decades, the human consciousness has been saturated with a huge intertwining web of conspiracy theories which are often too overwhelming for the average human to understand, and may in fact provide people with more questions than answers. And if someone is to suddenly see the bigger picture of what is really going on, and seriously tries to alert others, then the public has been carefully trained to view them as a crackpot or label them as another conspiracy theorist. It has been very cleverly orchestrated so that no one ever discovers the whole truth about anything and if anyone ever does figure it out they are ridiculed and silenced. Now however, due to the growth of the internet it has become a lot harder to silence people and to keep information contained. So what if a global conspiracy does indeed exist? And what if people are kept blind to it because they have been carefully taught to associate the word theory with the word conspiracy, so they never take the time to see that which is right before their eyes? And what if this conspiracy deeply affects our future, our education system, our media, our government, our monetary system, and our beautiful planet? If such a conspiracy does indeed exist, then most certainly it would affect everyone on a personal level. So would it not be imperative for you to become aware of such information, both for your own well-being and for that of your children? It is quite understandable that due to the overwhelming nature of this topic, many people do not even want to begin to look into such things. But if one does take the time to look and steps back a little further, a definite picture comes clearly into view. And what is found 
is a situation that could be easily rectified. Would people simply take the time to become aware? The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. It's no longer a theory. It's no longer a theory. It's no longer a theory. All matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. The only truth you know is what you get over this tube. We are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. An entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. Their whole purpose throughout history has been to teach a small number of people how to become adept at controlling everyone else. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream and we're the imagination of ourselves. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. Nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Whether you decide to take the time to listen to so-called conspiracy theories or not, there are some things that should be clearly understood by all, and these are not conspiracy theories by any stretch of the imagination. They are well documented, quite traceable and very provable facts, and these facts are as follows. There is one ruling bloodline that exists on this earth. This ruling bloodline is very old. It is the same bloodline that has always ruled the earth ever since the days of ancient Egypt and it is very pervasive. For example, many people think that anyone can get to be president of the United States but the reality is that a large number of presidents are in fact related and their lineage can be traced back to European monarchy and in particular to the line of William of Orange. This elite bloodline can actually be traced back a good deal further than that and even back as far as the royalty of ancient Egypt and it is this very same bloodline that has ruled the earth ever since and to which the British monarchy and many other world leaders can ultimately be traced. The families of this line are steeped in ancient traditions and symbolism and they do not attempt to hide these connections. Just a look at the royal coat of arms, the royal regalia and the coronation throne clearly demonstrates these connections. In fact, the signs and symbols are always right there in plain view for discerning eyes to clearly see. One only needs to take the time to look. Any real investigation shows us that the entire financial system by which the world is run today is actually operated by the Crown. And contrary to popular belief, the Crown does not refer to the royal family or to the British monarchy. The Crown actually refers to the inner city of London which is in fact a privately owned corporation that functions as a completely separate sovereign state outside the jurisdiction of England. Most people are completely unaware that when they swear allegiance to the Crown, they are actually swearing allegiance to this private corporate empire. The inner city of London also has two sister city states of Vatican City and Washington's District of Columbia both of which are also separate sovereign states within their host countries. Each of these three city-states has its own flag, its own laws, its own news services and its own police forces and each pays no taxes to the host country in which it is located. These three cities form a private covert empire that operates the entire western world that is known as the Empire of the Three Cities. The inner city of London is the centre for monetary control. Vatican City is the centre for spiritual control. Washington DC is the centre for military control. It is the individuals who control this private corporate empire who call all the shots and pull all the strings. These people control all governments and all mainstream media via the stranglehold they have over the world monetary system and more and more people are becoming aware of the reality of this all the time. 
The beginnings of this private empire can be traced back to a secret meeting that took place in 1773 between Mayor Amschel Rothschild and the heads of 12 other powerful families, including such dynasties as the Warburgs, the Schiffs and the Oppenheimers. Following this meeting, Rothschild employed the services of a man by the name of Adam Weishaw in the creation of a society known today as the Bavarian Illuminati, which was itself officially founded three years later in 1776. Many people think the Illuminati is a myth, but in actual fact this society is still in operation to this day and has since become the most powerful organization in the world. The surviving members of this order are the individuals who also indirectly own and operate the World Bank. It is the World Bank who covertly dictates global oil prices and whose shareholders also control the global Federal Reserve banking system. Each Western government actually has the legal right to coin its own money and to control its value, but they do not. They borrow money from this privately run central banking system. Through the magic of fractional reserve banking, these central banks are able to create money from thin air via the creation of money as debt and then profit on it by charging interest on the loans. Most people are duped into believing that their taxes pay for infrastructure such as road and schools and without taxes the country would fall apart. But this is completely untrue for the money is in fact borrowed from a private bank and then you are taxed in order to pay off the interest on the loan. No matter how you choose to look at things one thing must be clearly understood and that is that every person in the Western world who has a job is forced each year to give away approximately three months worth of their wages in taxes and that money goes directly into the pockets of the private individuals who own and run the Federal Reserve banking system. It's one big privately run scam. We've been lied to. 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 There are people who are guiding your life and you don't even know it. We've been lied to. You had better wake up and understand. There is indeed a global conspiracy going on, and the way it has been carried out and concealed is through control of the global money system, and hence control of all other subsequent systems of importance down the food chain, such as governments and media. It's important to understand the control of the global money system has been achieved through control of the global central banking system and that this system is a privately run enterprise. It is a private business that runs for a profit and it is owned and operated by wealthy international banking dynasties such as the Rothschilds, the Morgans and the Rockefellers. And please clearly understand that when you control the money supply you control the government. When you control the government, you control the people. When you control the money supply and the flow of information, you control the government, you control the people, and you control everything they know and everything they believe to be true. When you do it globally, you control all. It's that simple. During World War II, every country on both sides of the conflict was financed by the very same private bankers who lent out every dollar these countries used to finance their war effort at interest. In the ensuing years, the ordinary people from both sides saw great hardships and suffering. And during the fighting, there were heavy casualties amongst all the peoples involved. World War II cost over 50 million lives. 
when it was over, each country that participated was left with a huge debt to the banks. It was always the people who paid the price to increase taxes, longer hours and poorer working conditions. And quid bono? Who benefited? Well, J.D. Rockefeller stayed home and he made profits in excess of $200 million from it. For international bankers, there is nothing more profitable than war. And so when it is taken into account that these same international bankers now control all the major media, have ties to all the major oil cartels and arms dealers, finance all the main political parties and control the currency of all Western nations, is it any wonder that the world stays in a state of conflict and war? In the months following World War II, a number of prominent members of Hitler's core Nazi infrastructure were smuggled out of Germany and into America in a documented joint operation conducted with the Vatican, known as Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip saw as many as 80 Nazi war criminals that held key positions in Hitler's empire and had detailed knowledge of the Nazi war machine taken to America. These people included figures such as Klaus Barbie, along with numerous Nazi scientists who were all removed to the United States, supposedly to assist the government with spying operations against Russia and for assistance in the US rocket and space programs. Many of these men were given advisory positions on boards dealing with domestic and international security. And it is one such advisory panel that gave birth to the National Security Council. The NSC then combined with the Council on Foreign Relations and spawned its muscle, the CIA. And soon after the formation of these organizations came the creation of the United Nations. Counted as a supposed solver of world conflict, the UN was supposedly put there to maintain the safety and security of the people and to ensure that nothing as heinous as World War II could ever happen again. And the world has seen nothing but a continuous stream of war ever since. In fact, since the formation of the NSC, the CIA and subsequently the UN in 1947, the Earth has seen 258 conflicts and in fact more wars than in its entire recorded history prior to that point. Just why is that? Now each time one of these wars has erupted, usually in an area that never saw any real conflict before, it's happened in such a way that has invited Western intervention and each time we've been told by the media that this intervention is to ensure peace. Each time they say it, to make peace, we use war. Peace comes from war. War brings peace. War is peace. It's doublespeak. If you want peace with another nation, you don't go to war with them. You go to peace with them. You work at gaining an understanding for each other, and you help each other. You don't go and kill each other's children and both borrow money from the same bank at interest in order to do it. And noticeably, none of the areas in which such military intervention has occurred ever truly become peaceful again. Each one just stays in a state of guarded tension, looked over by peacekeepers and continues to function in a state of human suffering and as another endless source of income for the international banksters. In 1947, as soon as the CIA was formed, the organization began to spread its tentacles worldwide, finding footholds and taking root in almost all countries on earth. And from there, and working closely with its Israeli counterpart, the Mossad, the CIA has managed to undermine nations from within by using false flag operations, propaganda and terrorism. And please understand that these organizations were created on the recommendations of top-level Nazis, and they were founded and operate on Nazi principles. The CIA has since become the number one trafficker of drugs and human cargo in the world. 
The CIA are not the good guys. They are anything but. They are a criminal cabal disguised as an intelligence agency that is based on Nazi principles, has unlimited resources both financially and militarily, and they are answerable to no one. The CIA and Mossad function as virtually the one organization. Neither they or their agents have been responsible for virtually all terrorist bombings the world has seen in the last 60 years. Their prime mandate is to undermine world security and pave the way for the introduction of a global government controlled by a global monetary system. A global monetary system that is wholly owned and operated by private international banksters. At the end of World War II, the Reich didn't lose or surrender. Germany did. The Reich simply went underground and disappeared. The truth is that the Reich was controlled and financed by European bankers right from the start. And at the end of the war, they simply moved it to America and let it continue to function, but hidden in the shadows. And unbeknownst to the American people, or to Congress, or to the people of the world, it has continued to operate from behind the scenes. And over the last 60 years, it has infiltrated itself into all important levels of government, and industry, and the media, and has gradually spread itself out across the entire globe. Forget the politicians. They're, they're, they're an irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media, the media news, all the big media companies. So they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. The current world situation has been carefully planned and it is a plan that has been long in the making. This entire economic and political climate has been brought about by design. In the late 1970s a plan was put forth by the CIA to train Islamic fighters in the Afghan war against Russia in a new form of radical Islamic thinking. The concept was to teach the Mujahideen that the Russians were not just attacking their country, they were attacking their faith. During that period, large numbers of fighters came to Afghanistan to help in the struggle and large training camps were set up and run by the CIA to accommodate them. The man who was selected to lead the mercenaries by the CIA was one Osama bin Laden who was given the code name Tim Osman, which was used on trips made to Washington to lobby for funds. The trip to Washington was made by Bin Laden on at least two occasions. During this period, the CIA taught this new form of radical Islamic thinking and provided terrorist training to hundreds of thousands of Islamic fighters being careful to also keep a comprehensive database on all the people that they had trained. The Arabic name for this terrorist database was Al-Qaeda. Concerned over this new form of radical Islamism and the sheer volume of fighters the CIA was turning out, then Pakistani Prime Minister Venazir Bhutto wrote to the director of the CIA and cautioned him openly, saying in her letter, You are creating Frankenstein. It's alive, it's alive. It's alive. But her warnings went unheeded. They were not heeded because a radical network of extremists was exactly what the CIA had wished to create right from the very beginning. For without such a radical network of terrorists, the long-planned war on terror would never have been possible. In 2000, a neoconservative think tank called the Project of the New American Century released a document entitled Rebuilding America's Defenses. Outlined in that document was a plan for full-spectrum dominance of the globe. Air, land, sea, space, the internet, everything. 
In that document it said, and I quote, The process of transformation, even if it brings about a revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. One year after George W. Bush gained office, in the most contested election in US history, and many prominent members of PNAC were given positions in his administration, America experienced its new Pearl Harbor, and the entire PNAC plan was put into effect. Coincidence? When the events of September the 11th, 2001 unfolded, the troops were already there waiting to go into Afghanistan and the Patriot Act and Homeland Security legislation had already long been drawn up. They were already there, just waiting for the right event in order to introduce them. So when 9-11 happened, qui bono? Who benefited? Afghanistan? Iraq? Did any Arab country? No. But the Bush administration was given an open checkbook with which to take control of the Afghani poppy fields, the Iraqi oil fields, and the oil-rich and natural gas-rich Caspian Basin. And all protests of the invasions of the two countries was squashed before it started. Then the 7-7 bombings in London occurred, and again, who benefited? Islamism? Hardly. But support for the war in Iraq knew no bounds. The Blair government secured a massive increase in police and military funding and was also able to install thousands of domestic surveillance cameras throughout England. And then amid massive war protests in Australia, we saw the Bali bombing. And yet again, who benefited? A Muslim cleric who suddenly found himself wanted by the CIA in the centre of world attention? No, but all anti-war protests in Australia suddenly dissipated. The Australian Prime Minister John Howard received a huge boost in popularity. The Australian police got to establish themselves as the local police of the entire Australasian region. And both the Australian and the Indonesian military secured massive increases in funding. So who really benefited? The real facts, and as can be seen clearly by examining the evidence in all three cases, is that each one of these so-called terrorist attacks was a false flag operation designed to remove more rights from the people of Western countries, and to further consolidate the hold the international banking elite has over our world. The information on all these cases exists, it's out there in the public domain. Please do the research, because the media is just not telling you. A large portion of Al-Qaeda funding comes from the Pakistani ISI, and it still does. And yet the ISI is an openly admitted and funded wing of the CIA. The CIA created hundreds of thousands of extremists and trained them in radical Islamic thinking, and it kept a database on them all. All these extremists still receive funding from the CIA channeled to them by the ISI and don't even realize who they are funded by. Osama bin Laden has been a CIA asset right from the start, and when the US decided to go after bin Laden, they used the name of the CIA database as a terrorist organization. The war on terror is fake. It's a setup. There is no global network of terrorists waiting around every corner to blow everybody up. It's a myth. All the bombings are carefully orchestrated and follow a noticeable pattern. And you are never given the true facts or an objective look at the evidence in any one of these cases. And just think about it. A few years ago, no one had ever heard of Al-Qaeda. Yet now, almost every mishap in the world is blamed on them. And yet no one can seem to find any of them. Occasionally, some CIA asset that we've never seen before comes on the screen and says a few condemning words, and we're supposed to take that as confirmation. Can you see how easy it is for them to pull this scam off simply by controlling the media? And while people have been distracted and living in fear of terrorism, international law enforcement borders have been slowly eroded away. For example, 
To clean up after the recent tornadoes in America, Canadian soldiers were used. Australian and Indonesian police now routinely train together. And now remember here that Indonesian police have a reputation for being amongst the most brutal in the world. And yet here we have Indonesian and Australian police swapping ideas and methods. Many people have been trained to think that to talk about this stuff is to be anti-American. But nothing could be further from the truth. The perpetrators of all of this are based mainly in England and Europe. They are just using the military might of America to carry out their plans because they have usurped the American government. American President George W. Bush all but subverted the entire US Constitution and he robbed the country blind. However, it must be understood that it is not America itself doing this. The people who are doing this have set themselves up globally. Remember the words of JFK. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine. For years, it's been used coming out of our taps to fight tooth decay. More than a thousand scientists and medical professionals from across the world have banded together to warn us that even in its most diluted form, fluoride is still a poison and can harm your health. We can't dump it into the sea, but we put it into our own drinking water. It's extraordinary. Fluoride in our water supply is a, a very real and ever-present risk to our population at large. And there's also concern about advice given by dentists that it's okay for kids to swallow toothpaste containing fluoride. Uh, recommending that they swallow their toothpaste is very, very poor advice. But fluoride is poisoning us and the research is being overlooked. One of the two main tools used to keep you in a state of confusion without you knowing it is the fluoride in your toothpaste and water supplies. There are also many other chemicals that are added to processed foods to decrease your awareness and prevent your longevity. I implore you all to buy non-fluoride dental products and drink only water that you know is fresh. It's true that calcium fluoride is an organically occurring compound and harmless in small doses. But the sodium fluoride that is used in dental products and water supplies is a toxic waste. It is a byproduct of aluminium production and it does not prevent tooth decay. It inhibits brain function and promotes docility in the subject. Very notably, fluoride was first used by the Russians in mind control experiments conducted on prisoners in the gulags and later by Nazis in the death camps. It was well noted by both groups that prisoners who drank fluoridated water were much more docile and easier to control than other prisoners. Fluoride compounds are also the active ingredients in most antidepressant drugs such as Prozac, clearly demonstrating its ability to reduce aggression and motivation in people. It has absolutely no biological or health benefits at all, and it does nothing whatsoever to prevent tooth decay. In fact, it causes dental fluorosis, yellowing of the teeth, and pitting of the enamel. If you seriously think fluoride actually does have some health benefits, the next time you're out shopping, I challenge you to pick up a packet of any brand of rat poison you care to name and look at what it contains. Quite often you will find that there is only one ingredient, sodium fluoride. It has also been very well noted that a person under the influence of such a chemical is always completely oblivious to the fact. And the ability of fluoride to do this is not some internet myth as many would claim or have you believe. It is the absolute truth. Yet even now, and despite the clear results shown in the latest fluoride studies, as more people begin to awaken and begin to question the situation the world is in, the more governments are seeking to combat this awakening by undertaking the increased fluoridation of their water supplies, touting dental health as the reason, and nothing could be further from the truth. I will continue to speak out 
And the more this issue is, is covered up and swept under the carpet, the more I will speak out. My goal is to stop water fluoridation. How far can they control my mind? The second, and perhaps the most important tool that is used to keep people in check and prevent them from ever becoming truly aware, is television. Television is the greatest and most all-pervasive hypnotist and propaganda tool ever conceived. TV teaches people what to think, but not how to think, and TV has given modern humans an utterly false perception of society, of the world, and of each other. Through TV, the power elite have succeeded in creating a distracted, misinformed, divided and class-driven society suffering historical amnesia and completely oblivious to the true realities of their surroundings. And all of these people view themselves as truly informed and are very quick to berate and ridicule anyone who offers them an alternate perspective. Subsequently, through the ideas put into their heads by TV and through a TV-driven obsession with the collecting of meaningless trinkets, fashions and possessions that the TV tells them defines who they are as people, the power elite have also managed to rob most of the common man of their wealth, their lands, their skills, their education and their history. But most importantly, it has robbed people of their ability to think critically and objectively. And that is exactly what television was designed to do and exactly why it was invented. Every television set is also specifically designed to emit alpha waves. These can be clearly seen as a series of horizontal lines that run across the screen from top to bottom at regular intervals when using a camera to film an operating TV set, but they cannot be detected by the naked eye. These regular lines are not simply a normal part of the functioning of your picture tube. They are there for a particular reason and they travel across the screen at a predetermined and very specific pace. How often have you seen someone sit at a TV and say, I don't like this program? and yet they sit there and watch it anyway. How often have you done it yourself? It is because of these horizontal lines are there to generate these hypnotic alpha waves. Alpha waves place you into a trance-like state as you are told what to think by scripted news readers and told what to buy, what to wear, where to go and always kept otherwise distracted by sport, meaningless celebrity gossip and a barrage of sex and entertainment nowadays ever more frequently punctuated by messages of fear and warnings of imminent terror. These alpha waves produced by your TV set affect your electrical field even if you are not watching it. The TV merely has to be on. They become addictive as your body becomes used to the energy field and many people would simply feel unable to cope without the daily fix of their favorite TV show. Then this hypnotic state carries on throughout the day as people work robot-like at their given tasks, usually discussing whatever the television taught them with their co-workers. Often people think they are discussing their own thoughts, but when the conversation is really analysed, it's usually not. It's about what show they watched last night, or sport, or something they learned from the Discovery Channel, their feelings towards the opposite sex, or perhaps something like the war on terror. And whether they realise it or not, what they are talking about, and 98% of what they think they know about anything at all, has been taught to them by the television, or by print media that is wholly owned and controlled by the very same six people who own all the TV stations. That's right, six people. Sixty years ago, the media in the Western world was run by 86 small corporations, who all competed to deliver the best and most informative news. Today, it is run as a well-oiled, very streamlined and tightly controlled machine by just six, who now control all major Western mainstream television and print media. And with the current rate of corporate growth, that number is set to soon drop to three. This has set an extremely dangerous precedent, as it means that all televised and mainstream print media is now controlled by very, very few people. For a better and more informed perspective, obtain your news online from one of the many emerging independent websites and go to many sites from different countries and sources to compare the same story from a variety of perspectives. You have been told that the internet is an unreliable source of information, and it is true that there are many bogus websites. But there is also a lot of very reliable information from very reliable sources, if you look in the right places. And remember, 
The ones who are telling you the thousands of independent websites who have opposing views to the mainstream shouldn't be trusted. Number only six. It is just that it is those six who control all major media. So those six are able to control most of what information gets to the general public and how such information is presented. It must also be duly considered that all of these six media corporations have extremely close ties to major financial institutions and arms manufacturers. Such a conflict of interests immediately poses huge questions regarding the objectivity and reliability of any information presented by these organizations. And if that were not bad enough, each one of these six corporations gets their news from only one of two sources. Reuters or the Associated Press. These two organizations serve as an international news pool and channel all information down to the networks. Only Reuters actually owns the Associated Press and Reuters itself is wholly owned by the Rothschilds. This is why there is never any negative press about the World Bank or the international banking cartels reported to the people by the mainstream media. It is why the majority of people have no idea about Codex Alimentarius or the real effects of fluoride and simply do not know how the world and its corrupt money system is really run. There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance. You don't even recognize half the weapons that they use against you. And some of them seem so insignificant that you don't even try. We're developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. This is an enormous food crisis right now. He who controls food controls the world. Mankind is facing a massive threat, but it is not the threat of global warming or the threat of terrorism. It comes in the form of an insidious set of food standards known as Codex Alimentarius. This legislation brings with it the control of all food and effectively criminalizes nutrition. This is the most pressing plan of the elite and it is a plan that is already well underway. Indeed, many of these standards have already been adopted throughout the world. Through Codex, the elite have managed to either phase out or take control of all vitamin and nutrient companies. They've introduced deadly toxins into people's diets and purposely created nutrient deficient foods through the control and genetic manipulation of world seed stocks and they have already reclassified many nutrients as toxins. As one example of this, in February 2009 under Codex guidelines, the government of Thailand passed legislation forbidding the cultivation of a number of useful and medicinal herbs 
including turmeric, chili and ginger, by reclassifying these plants as hazardous substances. The global implementation of Codex Alimentarius becomes effective between December 2009 and February 2010. This will effectively condemn select sections of the global population to death through the forced consumption of toxic and nutrient deficient foods. Depopulation is high on the globalist agenda. It is happening right now, right before your eyes. They are doing it in the Middle East with wars and starvation and in Western countries with food toxins, water toxins and aerial spraying. The underground seed vaults being constructed around the world are not to protect the world's seeds from any coming catastrophe. They are to protect the genetically pure and wholesome seed stock of the elite in order to provide them with clean, nutrient rich food for years to come and to keep the supply out of the hands of the people who will be fed nutrient devoid genetically modified foods designed to kill them but slowly so the people don't notice it being done if we allow Codex Alimentarius to be implemented worldwide it is expected that in the first three years three billion people will die from preventable diseases and malnutrition alone Please understand that this is a plan to depopulate at least 80% of the world and that most likely includes you. And no, this is not a joke and it is not some wild conspiracy theory. It is the absolute truth. And this matter seriously needs to be addressed. All the information regarding this is available in the public domain. Though of course, you are not hearing it being reported by the mainstream media due to the simple fact that the money cartels who are implementing the plan own the mainstream media. There are enormous amount of people who have been trying to warn you about this, but the people are kept distracted by any and every means conceivable to distract them distracted by taxes, by sex, by crime, by media propaganda, by sport, body image, fashion, meaningless celebrity gossip, by war, the threat of terrorism, global warming, by TV, TV and more TV. Bringing this information to the public is the most important and challenging task humanity has ever been faced with. This time, what is at stake is our global survival.